Oh, Kim. Oops. Kim, we're on. Check okay. too, darn All good. right. <coughs> Everybody's here, right? Okay. It is 7 o'clock, and I call the meeting of the Plymouth School Committee to order. If everyone would please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Thank you, everybody. Before we get started, I'd like you all to join me in a moment of silence for Grace Whitmer. <clears throat> Grace passed away peacefully on December 19th, 2022. She was born in Morristown, New Jersey, and the child of a military family, so she attended eight elementary schools, um, moving around. In 1963, she got her degree in art and elementary education. Uh, they say Grace was a, born to be a teacher. She taught her own children um, the bedrock lessons of a successful life, love, honesty, and perseverance. She taught the required subjects of reading, writing, and arith arithmetic to her elementary students. Her joy palatable with each little aha moment, but her most important lesson and the one at which she excelled was teaching others to love and believe in themselves. Throughout her many years of teaching, Grace was a favorite of Plymouth's children. She couldn't go anywhere without former students approaching her to <coughs> say hello and share an enduring lesson from their time in her classroom. Grace viewed love, uh, life first and always through her heart. <coughs> instantly outraged at injustice, a warrior for the underdog. Um, she taught in, I don't know how many years she taught in Plymouth, um, but she actually was my Sunday school teacher growing up, so I've known Grace since I was born. Um, so if you could please just um, join me for a moment of silence for Grace Whitmer. Thank you. Okay. And if there are no objections, we'd like to change the agenda and have our student representatives speak first before we go across the street to Nathaniel Morton for our art awards. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. So welcome. And we'll start with, let's start with um, Adam Halper. No, I'm just trying to look okay. Plymouth North first. Attention seniors, please make sure you complete the Plymouth High School's local scholarship application which can be found in Naviance. The application, essay, and student aid report are due in guidance by February 1st at 2 p.m. The first semester ends and grades will close on Friday, January 20th. The second semester will begin on Monday, January 23rd. Winter athletics are in full swing. We encourage everybody to come out and support the Eagle student athletes. Game dates and times are posted on our athletic website and the Arbiter Sports app. Report cards will be distributed on Friday, January 27th. All students will arrive home from school with their report cards. Please join us for the PNHS Winter Acapella Concert on Friday, January 20th at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased in advance at pnhs-sings.com. On Wednesday, January 25th, the Plymouth North World Language Honor Society will hold their official formal ceremony to honor veteran and new members alike. The WLHS, which consists of the National French Honor Society and the National Spanish Honor Society, will induct 40 new members who met all the rigorous requirements to join their prospective honor societies. The WLHS also honored its 32nd year and its 18th third year members, bestowing official pins and medals <coughs> that highlighted the hard work, achievement, and leadership of said students. Eighth graders and parents and guardians are invited to our tech expo and program studies on Thursday, January 26th from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at Plymouth North High School. While here, here, you will learn more about the great programs and opportunities your prospective student will be offered to apply for it. Um, Poetry Out Loud occurs each year at Plymouth North High School as a school-wide initiative. It encourages students to learn about great poetry through memorization and recitation. As students explore and perform poems, 
They develop and strengthen their interpretation and public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and deepen their understanding of our rich literary heritage. The competition begins in the English classrooms and it's followed by a school-wide competition, competition, which will take place on January 19th at 6.30 p.m. Each student must memorize and recite two poems. The students are scored on poise, accuracy, understanding, articulation, and voice. Our school winner will continue on to the Massachusetts <coughs> semifinals held on March 4th through 6th, 2023. Participants from the Massachusetts semifinals will have an opportunity to qualify to compete in the Massachusetts State Finals, Sunday, March 12th, 2023. Attention juniors, please check your email from Naviance regarding signing up for the SAT school day. All students must bring in their checks to Ms. Scanlon in the guidance office by Friday, February 10th. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Simmons in guidance. The PNHS World Language Department is thrilled to present a week-long immersion trip to southern Spain for April Vacation 2024. Want to know more? Please join us for an informational parent meeting on Monday, January 23rd at 6 p.m. in the PNHS Lecture Hall or, contest, or contact Ms. Jenkins Brown or Mr. Fabian for more details. With the winter months and cold weather approaching, the senior class has partnered up with the Eagle's Nest to create a winter clothing drive. Please bring gently used slash new items for high school students. Items that could be greatly appreciated include socks, hats, gloves, winter coats, scarves, boots, and et cetera. Uh, Thank you very much. Before we move on, uh, sure. I, I think you said, maybe I heard you wrong, the checks for SAT, you said Friday, February 10th, it's got to be Friday, February 13th. Sorry, let me just look. Oh, okay. Yeah, in my notes it says Friday, February 10th, but I, yeah, you're definitely right. It is uh, Friday, Friday it's February 13th. 13th. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mine says February 10th, yeah. or oh. SAT. It might not be a Friday. It's not a Friday. No, it actually is. February? <laughs> Not January, right? Maybe it's January. It's January 13th. January. I don't have it. I should say February. Oh. All right. All right. We'll, we'll make sure our communication yeah, goes we'll out to all high sure school to, students. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to pull up my calendar, but not quick enough. It's Friday, February 10th. Oh, yeah. It is Friday. It's, it's right. It's, it's right. January 13th. Well, he didn't say that. He just said February. <laughs> That's right. We'll fix it. Okay. It is, it is the 10th, right? Yeah. It is yes. the 10th. February. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have Maya DePaul from Plymouth South. It is hard to believe that the close of the first semester is coming so quickly. Grades close on January 20th and report cards are sent home with students on the 27th. Students in grades 9 through 11 have final exams for half year courses the week of January 17th. We recently hosted our instrumental and vocal holiday concerts at, here at Plymouth South. Students did a great job with their performances. In addition, our winter sports teams have, have been having a great season thus far with many exciting wins. The Booster Club has a meeting this Thursday at Plymouth South High School. Also, the captain's breakfast will be at Plymouth North on Wednesday this week with captains from both schools. January 26th is our annual Tech Expo where students from PCIS and PSMS will come to South during the day and learn about many CCTE offerings at South. In addition, there is a parent portion that evening from 5 o'clock to 6.45 and our grade 8 parent orientation for academic orientation for families. Juniors have been notified to sign up for the April SAT, which will take place during the school day. Payment is due to the guidance office no later than February 10th. Seniors should be in the process of ordering their caps and gowns. The deadline for this order is January 15th. The senior newsletter with many important dates and reminders will be out to families this week. In addition, we have continued the opportunity for families to purchase yard signs honoring their seniors in the class of 2023. Monday, we encourage families to stop by Texas Roadhouse. They will be f hosting a fundraiser for the Plymouth Schools Music Organization. Biomedical and CCT applications are due for submission for incoming ninth graders by January 31st. Please see our school social media accounts and mailing for more information. And finally, National Honor Society inductions for Plymouth South juniors and seniors is February 2nd at Plymouth South. Great. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions or comments for our student representatives? No? Thank, you. Thank you very much. All right, so the next um, portion of our agenda is <clears throat> the uh, art exhibit, art, 
Exhibit Achievement Awards. And we are actually going to recess and we're going to move over to Nathaniel Morton where there's more space and do our award uh, presentations at that point. I believe it will be televised as well over there. It's being Perfect. televised live there as yep. well. Yes, we have yep. a, a large crowd of students and their families yes, over there, so they wouldn't fit here. Leave. Remember last time we did it outside, and yep. it was a beautiful evening, not the case this time of year, so we'll take a little field trip across the street briefly. It, so those watching at home won't miss out on anything. So we're going to take a quick recess and go across the street. <coughs> hmm?
Hi, everybody. How are you? Thank you for your patience, families. Uh, you, guys, you guys have been here for uh, a little bit now, and I really, I really uh, appreciate your patience. Uh, my name is Mike Capel. I'm the coordinator of visual and performing arts uh, for the Plymouth Public Schools. My pleasure to welcome you here uh, for this nice cer ceremony that we have for our Central Office Art Awards two times a year. Uh, teachers across the district pick, uh, hand-pick students, uh, select their work to be in a show that's across the street for about 12 weeks each show. Uh, the work is still up there. It's been up there for, for many weeks. Uh, it is up there tonight. If you have not had a chance, you can run across the street after this brief ceremony and take a look at the work. So again, thank you for your support. I thank the school committee for, for the support of the arts in the Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, the, the, uh, as I said, the school committee and central office, in particular, Dr. Chris Campbell, who is here, uh, but he does not uh, have a great speaking voice right now. He's been a little under the weather, so um, he normally would uh, speak a little bit, but uh, he uh, asked me to extend his uh, apologies for that. But without further ado, let's celebrate some kids, huh? All right? All right, excellent. Uh, Mr. Uh, Eric Chofi, Assistant Superintendent, and Ms. Ki Kim Savory uh, will uh, kind of preside over and announce the kids. So thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. I will say I'm very fortunate working across the street, so I got to see all of the artwork uh, for the past few months. So thank you for allowing your children to share that. Always look forward to seeing you guys walk around the halls looking for your students' artwork. Uh, as it becomes a game to try to find it. So. Um, my last name is Shofi, C-I-O-F-F-I. -F it's been butchered my entire life. I promise you if I mispronounce a name, it is not intentional. I'm not getting back for all the years of heartache it's caused me. Uh, I will try to do my best, but I did look at the Word document. There were 100 names underlined in red uh, where there was just uh, non-unique names, so I will do my best, I promise you. And I'm going to start off our first one from South Elementary, Finian Shetler. Nice job, Finian. Congratulations. Mia Blackwell. Mason McDonald. Camden Arsenal. From Manomet, Liam Huntley. From Manomet, Bradley Sabatinelli. Also from Manomet, Waylon Yuskovich. Nice job, brother. From West Elementary, Tomas McCurtain. From Federal Furnace, Mackenzie Wyman. From West Elementary, Harper McCann. Plymouth North High School, Jonathan McKinney. From South Elementary, Charles Costa. South Elementary, Emerson Costa. <laughs> Fix it on that one. From PCIS, Faith McDonald. From PCIS, Mia Bowes. From North High School, Bennett Hutchings. From Plymouth North High School, Abigail Matinzi. Plymouth North High School, Sarah Godlewski.
from PCIS, Cadence Loose. From Federal Furnace, Lilu LaPlante. Congratulations. From Federal Furnace, Nora Nevins. From PCIS, Caleb LeBlanc. PCIS, Marin Lodge. From Manomet, Emma Saunders. West Elementary, Samantha Casavant. From South Middle School, Zachary Lateo. From North High School, Molly Ryan. From South High School, Kylie Deegan Silvers. From PCIS, Natalie Yanni. PCIS, Caroline McGraw. From PCIS, Reese Westberg. From West Elementary, Manuela Aguiar. From Hedge Elementary, Cassidy Morrill. From Indian Brook, Alexandria Amara. From Indian Brook, Ryan Franchese. Franchese? Franchese. How about Ryan? Frances. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> From South Elementary, Ethan Lavelli. From South Elementary, Caleb Lavelli. From Indian Brook, Caleb Coughlin. From Indian Brook, Sawyer Furtado. From South Middle School, Charlotte Roy. South Middle School, Callie Golden. South Middle School, Lane Laloche. From Federal Furnace, Aria Heath. From Hedge Elementary School, Allison Flaherty. From South Elementary, Gavin Tober Lally. From Nathaniel Morton, Hannah Semkin. From South Elementary School, Dominic Venturelli. And from Plymouth North High School, Lillian Capel. All right, congratulations to all the students. We are so excited to get to see your artwork. And congratulations to the parents as well. And enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.
It's just a recess. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for being patient with us while we went across the street and recognized the students. All right, next up we have comments from the community. And before we get started, I'm just going to read the, our rules like we usually do um, about public comment. <clears throat> So prior to the start of public comment, the chair will be reviewing norms pertinent to community participation, which I'm doing. <laughs> um, at the start of each scheduled school committee meeting, um, actually, no, no, I'm not going to do that one. Any, um, anyone who may require specific accommodations or has a general question regarding public participation at the school committee meeting should notify the school committee secretary as soon as possible. The public comment section shall, at the sole discretion of the school committee chairperson, and in most instances, will not exceed 30 minutes in total. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes to present their material and must begin their comments by stating their name and address. The presiding chair may permit extension of this time in extenuating circumstances, and Ms. Badger will be timing. Topics for discussion should be limited to those items within the school committee's scope of authority. The authority of the school committee primarily concerns the review and approval of the budget of the district's public schools, the performance of the superintendent, and the educational goals and policies of the district's public school. Public comments and complaints regarding school personnel are not, <clears throat> or students, are prohibited. The chairperson, after a warning, receives the right to terminate speech that is not constitutionally protected. This includes speech that may provoke a violent reaction or cause a breach, breach of the meeting decorum through the incitement of disruptive conduct, including but not limited to threats, obscenities, and or insults. The school committee strongly recommends that comments longer than three minutes be presented in writing to the presiding chair prior to the meeting and comments made during the public comment portion of the meeting do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Plymouth School Committee or individual committee members. So, with that being said, is there anybody that would like to speak before the school committee today? No? All right, that was easy. All right, so, moving along. Um, Next up, we have program updates. So we'd like to welcome back our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, Brianna Hatab. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Campbell, are you gonna, do you need to um, say anything? Or? Uh, I don't, just to reiterate, we said, uh, Ms. Savory, uh, welcome Ms. Mrs. Hatab here uh, to give an update on the status of the work that she's been doing, the relationship she's been building uh, since starting here in July. So welcome. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. And is this for the PowerPoint? It should be. It should be. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Good evening, school committee and administration. Thank you for having me here to share updates with all, you all and those watching. I have had a pleasant past six months getting acquainted with Plymouth Public Schools, and tonight I will be discussing the past six months, which include my entry plan, scope of work, core values, goals, action steps, completed work, ongoing work, DEI walkthroughs, and strengths. <laughs> the creation of the DEI coordinator role is evidence that the town of Plymouth has taken a bold and courageous step to operationalize and build a coherent strategy for diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging. To be successful in the role of diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, it has been important that I dedicate time to ongoing learning about the community, which includes listening and gathering information that will inform and provide clarity for the next steps. And so this slide is a scope of all of the work within the role. Core values that I hold. I am a leader who values relationships and building and fostering a strong sense of community. And I am passionate about helping others feel valued. To stay true to my values, I am actively engaged in getting to know Plymouth and the culture. I have made myself available to the community and actively seek community events to attend, which 
is very important in this role. Goals that I have a part of my entry plan, along with community engagement and being accessible, establishing and maintaining personal and ongoing channels of communication will be essential to my leadership of DEI efforts moving forward. And you all can see uh, the goals a part of the entry plan. So the entry plan is divided into two phases. Phase one is listening and learning with the focus of phase, or in the focus of phase one and continuing into phase two. This phase included numerous one-to-ones and group meetings with various community members, and updates have been provided to district leadership along the way for feedback. This phase is going to be September through December, and again, moving forward into phase two. Phase two encompasses December and June, or December through June. Leading is the second half of phase two of the entry plan, culminating with the development and presentation of an outline focused on continuous improvement. This includes building and sustaining relationships and developing an action plan and timeline to update and develop the district strategic plan. Key focus areas within phase two are going to be leadership, teaching and learning, <laughs> accountability, human resources, culture, and climate, while also seeking to utilize the spaces that we have now within the district to already, already to enhance the work. Action steps in achieving um, goals throughout phase one and two. Um, to achieve these goals, there are action steps that have been taken or will need to still be completed. These steps can be and will be adjusted based on where the district is at and prevalent needs at the time. I won't read everything on the next three slides, but I will elaborate on how the work has been accomplished the past six months. In the summer and the beginning of the school year, I set up one-to-one -one meetings with principals, staff, community organizations, the Herring Pond, Wampanoag Tribe, and diversity, previous diversity committee members. I spent time introducing myself and the work at several building-based staff meetings. I added each school's events to my calendar in order to attend as many as I can. I have accepted student interviews and meeting requests, and lastly, I have also completed my own DEI walkthroughs of each school. And I'll let you all read the next two, um, which is just a list of what has been done. So ongoing work, I'm going to highlight um, a few points on this slide. Um, CARE Club, which stands for Cultural Ra Awareness Racial Equity Club, they have been implemented at the elementary, middle, elementary and middle schools as well as Plymouth Harbor Academy. Each club advisor for the elementary middle schools in Plymouth Harbor will be meeting with me and they are actively leading DEI events with their students at each of their schools. The diversity committee has been restructured and is now accepting up to 30 members and guidelines are um, on the website for those who are still wanting to join. Plymouth North High School, ENJ, um, which is the Equity and Justice Committee that they have, has a wonderful group of staff and students that have been actively engaged in addressing equity and justice at Plymouth North, and I have been partnering with them in their efforts. Um, I have facilitated focus groups at PHA, 
and they are going to be uh, scheduled for the rest of this year with PHA and moving forward with having more for focus groups throughout the schools. And lastly, collaborating with Curry College um, for a DEI course that the teachers can enroll in and that will be giving teachers PDPs and or credits that they can utilize um, for DEI work. You can hit, thanks. <laughs> so DEI walkthroughs. Um, in October, I conducted DEI walkthroughs. During that time, I introduced myself to some staff and students, spoke with, some, um, spoke with staff and students, and I walked around the entire school. The information gathered was a combination of observational data and speaking with students. From these walkthroughs, I took the strengths um, that each school uh, had across the district um, as trends, and I would like to share those with you. Thank you. So, as you can see here, um, teachers were actively trying to facilitate unbiased conversations and lessons, and again, this is what I looked at across the district um, as those trends. Diverse literature was available through classrooms and libraries. Gender diversity was well represented. Inclusive seating options were available throughout elementary and middle school. Special education inclusion was very evident um, throughout the schools and the grade levels. Um, and I discussed my role with elementary school students and they were very engaged and aware of bullying procedures. And I bring this up because it's important that we know that bullying can be related to student protected um, student identities and so making sure that elementary school students knew how to reach out to me and what to look for um, when they are addressing concerns to teachers or staff was really important and I feel that um, the students were very aware and engaged on what to do to prevent bullying and what to do if they were bullied or saw students being bullied. And thank you, and I will take any questions that you all have. Great. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Dr. Sorensen? I'm very glad, very glad to have you on board. Uh, excellent work. Keep it up. Uh, I want to just point out a couple of things. You know, we have the, I noticed the CARE Club yes. is, is uppercase, so I'm assuming it's an acronym. Yes. And because, you know, we have the CARE Program. Yes. And so I'm a little concerned that somebody who isn't, who isn't extremely knowledgeable sees the care club and might think it's the care program and therefore not be interested in participating. So it could, it could produce a little bit of confusion, but. Yes, uh, we try to make sure that we um, have them write it out completely um, so that there isn't any confusion. Um, when we're trying to just talk amongst each other, we say care, um, but we are actually trying to make sure that students use the full. Sure, and my, and my other point was, uh, the walkthroughs were great, and I'm, I'm sure you had an opportunity to observe student to student, teacher to student, and teacher to teacher. Is there anything you, you, you can share with us about observing those relationships or conversations as it, as it pertains to uh, DEI? Yes. Um, so far, what I've been able to see is teacher to student. Um, and most of the time, students are engaged in the work. Um, teachers are very actively trying to engage students in the work and be mindful. And I did mention on um, the previous slide, like when they're um, sharing different material or hard topics, they really do try to remain neutral in what they're presenting to students. Um, and that's what I've seen so far. There are more walkthroughs scheduled to focus intently on different aspects of DEI work. This was just to see where the district was at um, without 
any specific look fors at the time. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Badger? I just really wanted to say thank you for the work that you're doing and thank you for taking the time to meet with us. I know I'm pretty sure you met with everyone on the committee and all the, the outreach that you're doing. So just thank you for doing it. And I just am really excited to see what you know comes out of your second phase. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Great. I, I have one question. I know that you had talked about um, meeting with elementary students about bullying. And are you going to do that with the um, middle and high as well? Because I know that at, at those ages, I think it's uh, kids are a little bit more afraid of, you know, retribution or, or getting even more bullied for reporting it, um, where it might be a little easier at the elementary level. Are you gonna have those same conversations or are they gonna look different? Yes, they're gonna look different. Um, the elementary schools had bullying assemblies and I went <coughs> after their bullying assemblies or I attended um, the bullying assemblies in, um, that day. So I was able to have those conversations because it was fresh in their mind and then also introduce myself to kind of explain the work. Um, with the, the middle and high school, it's going to look different. Um, and a lot of that, I think, from what I've heard so far from some students is the, autonom uh, the anonymous mm. um, way of reporting that they would like to see. And so that is going to be a goal down the road. Great. Thank you. Is everybody good? All right. Thank you so much. And, and I echo everybody's sentiments that we're happy to have you here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Okay, next up we have uh, curriculum coordinators and we are going to hear from the health instruction team. Yeah. Well, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Rogers. <laughs> um, so thank you, I have a few people that I'd like to bring up even though they don't want to come. Um, <laughs> Jenna Sorensen, Amy Harriman, um, Stefan, Eric Foley might throw something at me. <laughs> um, we'll just pass over him. Sarah, if you guys want to come forward, you're more than welcome to. Um, but I did bring some of our um, health and wellness educators with us today and our department heads, just in case there were any questions that came up. So this is really a follow-up. I believe it was Michelle Badger, but I could be wrong, at our last Saturday meeting, who kind of just wanted an update on where we were at. Um, so health education has been a pretty hot topic. Um, in the country and uh, especially in, in the state, especially whereas we don't have new health and wellness standards and it's been a while. So as a team, we kind of decided that to heck with it, we're not waiting for the state. Um, we're kind of just forging forward because we feel is that, um, especially coming out of a pandemic, that this is just critical work for our students um, and just knowing based on the data how anxiety, coping skills, resiliency um, is really been a challenge for some of our kiddos. So um, we this work really kicked off over the summer, um, getting together with our health educators at North High School um, to kind of start our curriculum work. And it's been um, ongoing for this entire year. We've made amazing progress. Very fortunate to work with such amazing um, professionals who um, are so passionate about it, as am I, because I feel like, again, um, just can't, you know, our kids need, need a health education experience that um, is current, up to date, and relevant for the things that they're dealing with, which we'll talk about in the PowerPoint. So um, thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, so I don't, do you have the clicker? Clicker. Do you want the clicker? Um, Jenna can have the clicker. <laughs> Press the button. Are you sure? Okay. Towards you. It's the forward button. <laughs> um, so you can just go ahead to that next slide, Jenna. Um, so I do want to say that this is a work in progress. We are still under construction. There's still a lot of work to do. So anything is really very much in draft form. We have professional development this coming Wednesday, which we're excited about. So really this um, revisiting some of our vision, our goals and things like that. Again, just trying to make sure that um, we're all on the same page as a district, <coughs> K through 12, but also um, making sure that our kids get what they need when it comes to health education. Um, so I just wanted to put the disclaimer there. That there is nothing in here that's not um, changeable or under review at any <coughs> point in time. Um, oh, 
There we go. Um, so our vision for the health department is to provide students with a comprehensive school health and wellness education and ensure that all students have access to the information that they need to develop and grow into healthy, informed adult, adults. And Jenna's going to talk a little bit about what health education looks like in Plymouth. Um, a few years ago, we were fortunate enough to add additional health teachers at the elementary level. Um, so that has increased. Um, still not enough, in my opinion, but um, we're working, working towards it. <laughs> Agreed. Um, so health education it, at the elementary level, students have health class once every three weeks. Um, Amy Harriman is one of our health educators at the elementary level. At the middle school level, um, they have 45 days for one term, so one quarter, and they're on a 14-day rotating schedule, so it's essentially 10 days out of that 14-day 14 rotation, 14 day rotation. Um, High school, they have one semester in grade 9, one semester in grade 10, and that is every other day, I believe. Um, and then there's semester-based health electives offered for grades 11 and 12. So that's what it looks like at each level throughout the district. Um, so the goals of the... Am I goals? Uh, I was goals. Uh, your goals. Go ahead. Goals. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. No, goals okay. for Plymouth Public Schools Health and Wellness Curriculum. So the three main goals, to provide students with the knowledge and skills they need to develop positive attitudes regarding health and wellness, to ensure students receive comprehensive, accurate, and unbiased health instruction as part of their education, and to provide students with the knowledge and skills necessary to have healthy, positive, safe relationships and behaviors. So knowledge and skills and to have a positive attitude and then the content and instruction and then hopefully that will result in positive, safe and healthy behaviors and relationships. I keep forgetting I have the clicker. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the steps that we've taken to achieve those goals and again those goals started to be developed over the summer. Um, constantly under revision as we go through this process we're kind of adding wordsmithing feeling you know if there's something missing how do we add a second you know a fourth or fifth bullet um, is really looking at policy revision um, so right now currently we have a wellness policy which is really focused on the nursing side of things um, it's not really focused on health education so really parsing both of those things out because I feel like this curriculum area really warrants its own policy. Um, so policy committee is going to be looking at that. Curriculum changes in development. Um, Jenna will talk about this a little bit later, um, but a lot has changed in our societies, with our families, with our students. Um, so really looking at a relevant, um, a relevant health curriculum um, that tackles or at least attempts to tackle some of the issues that our youngsters are dealing with today. Material adoption, so right now there really isn't a consistent material um, platform textbook um, that is utilized K through really 10. Um, so we're in the process of vetting some materials now um, and by the end of the year we hope to make a decision on what curriculum and materials we will be using as a district. Um, so that will be um, so it will help to provide a more comprehensive framework for all of our educators um, and provide students with that comprehensive look at health education across the district. Staff training and professional development. So it was really nice to see our health educators during our full day PD attend uh, the Massachusetts Health and Wellness full day professional development. It happened to fall on our full day PD, so we were able to send um, quite a few staff to that. So it was great to see them um, working as a team, getting to know their colleagues, K through um, kindergarten through high school. Um, so continuing with that professional development work um, and then creating an up-to-date web, web page for parents and stakeholders. We get lots of calls throughout the year. Parents want to know what their students are learning, what the materials look like. Um, are we teaching this? Are we teaching that? Those kinds of things. So to just have a place for parents to go, that's a more up-to-date and current um, web page. Um, so I kind of went through these already. So again, just looking at policy revision through the policy subcommittee, separating out health and wellness um, versus health education, um, establishing a cohesive and aligned K through 12 curriculum scope and sequence with regard to um, health education. Am I clicking? And then the next steps for 20, um, 2023 and 2020. 
2023, 2024, and beyond. Um, so again, in June, we're hoping to make a uh, to make a decision with regard to the curriculum that we will be using and the materials and the web-based platform, um, updating health education website and unpacking the new DESE frameworks. We have been promised by the state that they will be out this spring. So if that happens, we will be spending a good chunk of, I know Amy's laughing at me, they've been saying it since 2000. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they're, they say it's gonna happen. So if that <laughs> happens, we'll have a lot more work to do next year in unpacking those. Um, continuing to update our scope and sequence to ensure alignment with the new standards. And if we don't have new standards in the state, we've been utilizing the national health standards, creating additional health electives at the high school. So we looked at the program of studies at North and South. The health um, electives that are offered for grade 11 and 12 need a little updating. Um, so looking for teachers who are innovative and want to write a new um, course for electives for our juniors and seniors. Um, opening that up as an opportunity, collaborating with the DEI coordinator, coordinator SEL coach, and um, the PYDC coordinator to make sure that those content areas are reflected in the curriculum. Um, and then I will turn it back over to Jenna for our final few slides. So as we've said a couple times, the <coughs> frameworks have not been updated since 1999, which, um, makes things a little bit difficult. And since then, if you just think about how much has changed and what has happened in our country, in our society since then, um, and how the effects of that on our youth and on our culture and on society and on everybody, um, our students and families, such as family dynamics and structures, the opioid crisis, social media, school violence, access to and effects of technology, the legalization of marijuana, the worldwide pandemic, just to name a few. So we are hopeful that the standards and the frameworks are updated. Um, and I do wanna say that it's kind of exciting, whether it happens or not soon, we hope it does. Um, the fact that we're kind of getting together as a district, K to 12, um, is really exciting. As you know, the last time we were here, it was to talk about the elementary he health program educators, and they're so passionate about what they do. Um, so to think that the content and the skills will be scaffolded and, you know, throughout K to 12, right now we have K to 5, we have, you know, we use the Michigan model in second step, and then to have something for middle school and high school that kind of goes down the line and is, is scaffolded, I think is pretty exciting. So it's, thank you to Dr. Rogers and to all of you for prioritizing it. And I think it's awesome to have everyone coming together um, from the different levels because it's a bigger conversation and it's important. So thank you. Okay, if anybody has any questions. Does anybody have, um, I know you. Uh, Ms. <laughs> <Ms>. Badger. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thank you, you so first. much for the work that <laughs> you all are doing in this. I mean, I think you've all heard me talk about this countless <laughs> times. So I'm really excited that we finally made it to the middle school and high school level because just that list that you had up there, our world has changed so much. I mean, in 1999, I was still in high school. Like, come on now. Like, the world has changed. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> it's just wild. But... I, and I was really excited to hear about the elective piece. And do you currently have electives or that's one thing that you're looking to kind of? So I think they're limited in at grade 11 and 12. We have a couple health electives. Can you speak to that? Yep, we have um, right now at the high school we have contemporary living and independent living. Oh. So we're looking to maybe expand on those, but just, just a couple right now. Uh, we have a mindfulness class oh, cool. as well. And um, Steph and I are part of a group of just health administrators um, on the South Shore um, that is a really good collaborative group and there are emails, the email chains and, and meetings every couple months. So they share um, their program of studies from different high schools. So we've kind of been talking about different high schools that do it differently just to kind of pick their brains and think of other ideas that are a little bit more current and a little bit more um, relevant and broad. So I think that's kind of exciting too, to expand that. Cool, and then my last question is, where we're talking about the materials to adopt, and this is probably more for Dr. Rogers, but is there gonna be a cost? Obviously, there'll be a cost associated with that. Mm -hmm. Do we have some sort of ballpark? Or, I mean, I know we're in the situation that we're in right now, so just mm -hmm. thinking ahead. Yeah, so I've been working with Dr. Blaisdell to identify a funding source for, for curriculum materials, but it has been prioritized. Um, so 
and there, I'm also in the process of pursuing a couple of um, competitive grants as well. So, awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. Did you have something? I'm, this is this is dangerous because I'm going to start talking and I don't know where I'm going to end up, <laughs> and, I, and I mean that sincerely. But That's I'm. Why I brought Jenna with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought Jenna with me. <laughs> um, this is very. This is this is critical to all of us. We've been we've been, health education, health and wellness is so 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 high in our priorities as a school committee. Um, and and in your in in your vision statement have access to the information they need to develop and grow into healthy, informed adults. And one of your goals in your, is to, to receive comprehensive, accurate, and unbiased health instructions. Those two sentences seem simple, but they're, there's, they're not even close to simple, and we all know that. Um, what I want to address, and I'm gonna change enough of the information, it's not in this district, but I'm gonna tell you a story that I've been working with on an individual. This individual is failing gym class in this particular high school, and this individual knows that if they don't pass gym class, they won't graduate. And the reason why this individual is not attending gym class, because he's afraid, oh, see, I'd let the gender go. He's afraid that something very personal is gonna show up in gym class, and uh, therefore he's deliberately skipping gym class enough to fail the class. My mental help with this child is trying to get him to go to somebody in the school that he can trust and say, here's my problem. This is why I cannot go to gym class. And many, and we all know this, children make decisions that they am trying to keep secret or children fear that if something gets opened up, their life is ruined. Mm -hmm. And the role that we have in health and wellness, I believe, is to give these children some trust. There should be somebody in the building that they can go to, whether it's, whether it's DEI, whether it's the nurse, whether it's health education, whether it's the educator. We shouldn't, it's such a hot area. I see it in my office so many times. A child comes in and says, you can't tell my parents. Well, of course I have to tell your parents. We have to save them. I don't know, I told you when I started this conversation, I don't know where I was gonna end up, but, but, uh, but I'm glad you're doing the work you're doing and I, and I want you to know that we have to have a vehicle by which their health and wellness can, they have somebody to turn to because they keep getting off the bus in the morning and I, and I think that's my comment. Sorry for that diatribe. Mrs. Jackson? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question about, um, you were saying that the, the state hasn't put out new guidelines. Do you expect that any of the current work that you're doing would be, uh, or looking into curriculum, would be changed by them updating their guidelines, or um, would that take a different course or change it a little bit? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we actually contemplated that quite a bit. And so for us, the decision was we could put it on pause or we could move forward. And I felt like it was more detrimental to put it on pause. And you know, the, the downside to that is if, it, if the state comes out with new frameworks and they're completely radical and it's something that we haven't talked about and it's some, nothing that's aligned with the national standards, we may have to go back and do a little bit more work. Um, and I think, I think that's okay. Um, I wasn't really willing to wait. I don't think anybody that I work with was willing to wait either. Um, so we felt as though, again, that it, this was just so critically important that we didn't want to wait another year for the state to, you know, again, get close to releasing them and then back off of it for whatever reason um, because of another state law or, you know, something else that was going to pop up. So we just forged forward. And if we have to go back and back to the drawing board, we're okay with that. But we did try to stick, as, you know, we are sticking with the national standards, and my guess is that the state standards will be, while more detailed and maybe a little bit different because the state of Massachusetts is, is typically um, more progressive. Yeah, more progressive, that um, we're going to be in a good place. Excellent. Thank you. I agree. I this agree, too. I think, if anything, <coughs> we may have the ability and option to add more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. if anything. Great. Mrs. Haywood? Um, 
Yes, thank you again um, for the presentation. And I'm just picking back on, on what others have said. I mean, I, I remember coming into the committee five years ago, and even five years ago, it was, oh, we're about to come out with, um, and I know that there was a presentation um, that was given on, on uh, the district side regarding the health curriculum. And so I'm glad to see that you're going to not wait <laughs> anymore <laughs> and, and kind of put something together yourselves. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I echo that. Anyone else? No? Great. And thank I just, again, I want to just a huge shout out to our health educator. It is probably one of the most difficult <laughs> topics to teach our youngsters. Um, sometimes parents can also be a little bit challenging in this process. Um, and um, they just do an amazing job. They are professional, they are tactful, they are just really, really amazing, and I am completely humbled by um, how great you guys are, and I'm so fortunate to have gotten to know all of you guys on a much more um, personal level this year, so I just, um, again, I, I think they're amazing. I couldn't teach what they teach, um, mm -hmm. and, and they do it with really um, such professionalism. It's just, it's really nice to see, so thank you guys for that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Next up, we have a superintendent's report. Dr. Campbell. Thank you, Ms. Savory. Uh, hopefully, I don't go into a coughing fit here. Um, well, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you all had a nice holiday. Uh, excited to be back and uh, uh, move forward with the second half of the school year. Lots of exciting things coming. Uh, a few things to update you on uh, related to the last conversation that we just had. Uh, there will be an internet safety presentation for parents the U.S. Uh, Attorney's Office is hosting. Uh, the virtual is presentation for parents will happen on Wednesday the 18th from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, the presentation is entitled Keeping <coughs> Kids Safe and Secure Online. There's many topics that will be focused on social media and, and your digital footprint for students, cyberbullying, sexting, gaming. Uh, victim support and protecting against online predators. So it, it should be a, a very good uh, presentation. It is free. Registration is required, however, uh, but information has been shared through social media. I will continue to promote that. Um, another thing sort of related to health, um, but on the nurse's side, um, <coughs> you may have seen uh, a piece on Channel 7, I believe it was, that talked about the shortage of school nurses mm. in, in, in school districts. Um, proud to say that North, uh, Nurse Luann from Manomet Elementary was, was featured in that for saving a student who choked um, this past November. Um, so just, you know, really when we talk about wellness, um, nurses play a critical role um, to the, well, the health and wellness of our students. So I feel very fortunate that we have the level of support and, and, and um, nurse educators in our schools, um, unlike many communities that are struggling to do that. So I feel very fortunate that, that we continue to, to have that support. Um, the Plymouth Family Network will be doing an information session uh, on choosing a preschool. So this is for families with young children, uh, hosting this on January 12th. Again, it's for families that are searching for preschools. Um, so um, our Early Childhood Center principal, Denise Tobin, will be providing suggestions and, and we'll walk through the public preschool lottery process as well. So we do require registration for this and more information can be found on the district website. Um, I will be participating in an opi opioid roundtable discussion um, hosted by Senator Moran next Wednesday, the 18th at the Falmouth Public Library. Uh, this panel presentation will be moderated by Cheryl Bartlett. Uh, Ms. Bartlett was the president and CEO of the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center and the former director of um, public health commissioner. Uh, Senator Moran is looking for how the state can more effectively allocate funds and initiatives uh, that can be recommended for the Opioid Recovery and Remediation Fund Advisory Council, uh, which was actually established uh, due to the funding secured by uh, Governor-elect Healy through the state's settlements with the opioid <coughs> manufacturers, the pharmacy. So I look forward to uh, speaking on that panel. Um, we'll be hosting a, ca a caregiver coffee chat on Wednesday the 18th from 6.30 to 7.30 at Cold Spring Elementary School, an opportunity to um, meet some elementary families, 
enjoy refreshments, share feedback. Um, I'll be sharing feedback about the importance of family engagement with our, within the Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, one of our adjustment counselors uh, and nurse case manager will present information on com combating holiday stress, winter blues, and share information on local community resources that are available for families. Uh, child care will be provided by the YMCA as well. So another event we're looking forward to. And lastly, just a reminder that uh, we have our joint board meeting uh, with the select board and finance committee tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the Great Hall at Town Hall. Great. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Dr. Campbell? All right, thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we have committee member reports. I know we haven't been back that long, but does anybody have anything to report? Or recommendations? No? <clears throat> um, I have one little quick Oh, do you have something? I'm sorry. Yes, oh, go I, ahead. I just wanted to mention that um, on uh, January 16th, MLK Day, we will have a breakfast at Plymouth South High School. Um, we have a guest speaker. Her name is Mariama White Hammond. Um, she is the chief um, uh, of um, actually open space and environmental um, uh, uh, services at um, in Boston. Oh. She's a reverend, um, and so she will be the guest speaker. Um, as well as um, our own Brianna Fatah will be okay. speaking as well. <coughs> and then um, and the <coughs> whole, um, uh, performing arts uh, department, the students will be singing. Great. Oh, Ms. Can Badger? Add, yeah. <laughs> um, it, and we would like people to register ahead of time. It's $15 a person, and it will help us to be able to give a head count to the schools. Thank you. Great. <laughs> it's Anybody on our else? Facebook page. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? Um, I just have one, <clears throat> what, one quick thing, and basically I'm just gonna, I'm going to um, throw some dates at the board. Just some of them are far out, but this past weekend um, we had the MASC Mass Association of School Committee's President's Retreat and Board Meeting, which I attended, um, and we just discussed the calendar for the year, amongst other things like our legislative priorities. Um, I know that you all saw the resolutions that we voted on that's pretty much what we're going to go to our legislators with to um to you know ask for um i sent everybody some things that we got i know that they are working on what you know the budget issue and the 14 percent increase in the special education they everybody's in the same boat and screaming and kicking and yelling so hopefully they're going to yell loud enough and we can get some relief there as well as the collaboratives because the collaboratives are suffering as well mm -hmm. um so there's going to be a lot of work uh involved around that um but i'm going to give you some dates so the the day on the hill is going to be april 13th um they are bringing back the uh culinary arts programs so we will uh, for those that don't know, we usually have all the technical high schools bring their culinary programs and serve lunch. Um, and it, that's usually the high, one of the highlights of the day. If you've been, it's great. Um, it's not going to be at the State House. Uh, we're going to walk over to the State House when we meet with our legislators. Right now, it's a tentative at the um, UMass Club which is close, and I believe that's where we're gonna have our board meeting the day before, so we're gonna to try to have it there as well. Um, the Summer Institute, I know it seems so far away, <laughs> um, but the Summer Institute is June 14th and 15th in Marlboro, and the joint MASC-MASS conference is going to be in November 8th through 11th. And um, that's it, that's it for me. Fourteenth, yes. Thank you. Um, huh? Maybe it's. Oh, let me double check that. Okay. I just wrote it down from my notes. It might be July. Let me check. Okay. Um, and that's it for me. So next we have building committee report. Did the building committee meet? We meet this Thursday. Okay. Great. All right. Next we have personnel reports. Mr. Shothi. Yes. Good evening. Uh, so tonight I do have to share with you that we received four medical leave requests. Uh, we did receive seven resignations, and then we appointed one certificated staff member and three classified staff members. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up we have unfinished and new business. Does anyone have anything they want to bring before us for new business? Mm -hmm. 
And for unfinished business, I think that we're going to, uh, I don't know, Dr. Campbell, do you want me to, the redistricting conversation? Or sure, are we the, just going to um, give a quick update on that under unfinished business, unless anybody else has anything else that they want to bring up? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, yeah, very brief. Um, so I, I can't recall the last time that we did the presentation. Uh, the date is escaping me, but we did the presentation on the questions that the community had. Um, at that time, the recommendation was to take a vote this evening regarding the redistricting. However, um, speaking with Ms. Savory, suggested that we put that off a little bit and use this as an opportunity um, through unfinished business to have any conversations regarding any questions that the committee may have related to um, how we left it that evening, any other questions, concerns, suggestions before taking it to a vote or any information that you may desire before we get to that point. Does anybody have anything, Ms. Badger? So I, I think we've kind of already had a, this conversation, but I don't know if it's the rest <laughs> of the group. So I, I know what we kind of ended on the fact that we don't have the critical mass to have if we do it next year for it to make that big of a difference in any of the schools, correct? Or in Indian Brook, it's not a huge. Yeah, so um, when looking at those students that would shift with any proposed redistricting uh, suggestions there wouldn't be a critical mass as you said Miss Badger that would um, relieve Indian Brook to a point where we would have some vacant classrooms um, I am concerned about two things uh, one the new development that happens to be in that general location which is currently assigned to Indian Brook Elementary School there's 200 three-bedroom homes going in there I think we have two <coughs> families in there currently they may be already at Manomet Elementary School. As you recall, last summer we, mm -hmm. um, through the support of the, the school committee, allowed families that were very close to Manomet um, to transition to Manomet if they, if they chose to for kindergarten. Um, we had about four, I believe we had four families that took us up on that, which is related to my other concern. So we have, we've, we've transitioned um, and families are currently transporting those children, but I'm concerned about what that would do next year as well. Yeah, yeah, and so my question is, so we already have the students that are in Manomet, so we kind of have a responsibility to next year be able to transport them. I think that was part of the discussion. Yes. yes this year, then next year probably. So if we... When does it get to the critical mass that it's going to make a significant difference for Indian Brook? I guess that's where I'm getting to. So we looked at five-year and 10-year projections, so I, only, I can only give you, off the top of my head, I can only give you that okay. five-year would, yeah. would make a difference. So um, not next year, but, um, well, actually not. Technically, this would be, year, next year would be year two. Okay. So three years from three three years from there there would there certainly would be I can't say um, with any certainty that it wouldn't come sooner I'd have to go and <coughs> physically have our data um, office run those numbers we have in our transfinder which is our transportation software um, to see where those families those students reside so I'd have to we'd have to do a count yes. of those students to see how many would go over in, in year three and four before yeah. year five? I mean, regardless, it is kind of populating a school that is underpopulated, so. Yes, I mean, we do have, I do have a concern with an underpopulated school, mm -hmm. um, and we do continue to have concerns with uh, crowded schools, th those being Indian Brook and South Elementary. Um, they, they, are, they are crowded, yeah. for sure. Does anybody else have anything they want to ask at this point? I know we're gonna continue. The discussions and further meetings, but Mr. Bizzano, looks like you. Have. Yeah, I guess I'm more confused. I, I I would have. It's hard for me to have questions without knowing what it is we're considering. It doesn't seem like you're recommending any changes at this time, or have a a proposal you're putting in front of us. So without short of that, I don't know what questions yeah, we well, would have. I mean, I, if, I'm not yeah. I'm not pushing you to do that, but I'm saying I don't I don't I don't know where to start if I don't know what you're. 
my recommendation would be the original recommendation in terms of the scenario. Um, I, I, so if we had conversations around that, um, I'd be happy to answer questions <coughs> regarding that. I know that we had some conversations about certain components within that scenario and whether or not they needed to move, um, you know, w with, with that recommendation. Um, I just point out that that scenario that we're recommending would not we would not see a significant impact yeah. next year. So, 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 yeah, so to me that says you're not actually recommending that we do anything. I mean, it, 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 normally you would ask us, hey, I, I want to do this. We as a you know, board determine whether or not it makes sense, but it doesn't sound like you're pushing us to make it. I mean, it, I can't see that we would decide, hey, you know, Dr. Campbell isn't pushing for this, but let's go ahead and redistrict anyway. I mean, to me this you know, it would come more from your guidance. I think so. at the last meeting, too, he said it would yeah, be that's, okay. Well, yeah, that, well, which yeah. is why I'm, yeah. that, that's why I'm struggling with the conversation, because it doesn't yeah. seem like we're, Yeah, you know, I, I, I think, Mr. Pizzano, to, you, to, to your point, um, I'm not overly concerned with what next year would bring. So I, I would recommend that scenario, just the timing of when it would be initiated is where I'm still questioning it. So I'd have to go back and look at that specifically to see where we would see that um, that uh, that relief. Yeah, and I mean, given that, then I would. Think, I mean, we came up with that scenario a full year ago, with the intention of implementing it. You know, sure. this coming year. I would think if by the time, it, you know, if we're going to take say another year, it, it would probably make sense to, you know, see if that scenario needs tweaking. You know, to make it more effective. You know, obviously we want to make sure if it's, if we're going to do something that's impactful. So, I mean, it sounds like to me we're almost taking a, a step back. Mm. You know. mm. oh, Mr. Morgan? Oh, wait, Mr. Pizzano. No, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so to kind of follow up on that, um, are, are we really at this point looking at 24 25 at this point for a redistricting? Because it's almost too late to do 23 24. And then my second question is when does the committee plan to? actually take a vote on the matter because we've done some extra meetings some research some public forums um we're not voting on it tonight but do we ha have an idea when we might be taking this up for a vote yeah i mean i would defer to the the committee um if you uh, but i i think again my recommendation would be that scenario 1B, particularly because of Man Man Elementary School mm -hmm. and the neighborhoods that are currently, um, that we're transporting students eight and a half miles away um, to school when there's a school that's two, in some cases a mile and a half away from their, from their, from their home. So while it's not, it may not be a critical issue, um, I, I do think it is a correction that needs to happen um, in the in the near future. Um, that being said, as I did say at the last presentation, there is no critical mass that is relieved at Indian Brook. I am concerned about that that new development, um, how quickly people populate that new development, um, and what that would do to Indian Brook Elementary School. I'm happy to run the numbers for years. Two, three, four, two, three, and four, to see what that would look like. Um, I don't think it would be a big issue for us if we had a recommendation made by late January, early February. To be completely honest, I think it's plenty of time for us to make any uh, communications transitions um, to 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 support families with that transition. Um, you know, that's, that's work that we, we would be able to do, I think, without any concern. I've, Thank you. I've, I've asked that we put it on the, our Saturday agenda as well, so that way if we can, you know, I, one of the things that I had, I had asked as well is <clears throat> I think before we were able to make a clear vote and, you know, propose it or let the public know we – you know, this whole time we've been talking about, you know, we'll talk about the details later, like like Dr. Campbell said, like the grandfathering, this and that, those specifics that I would like to have those all answered for us before we get to the vote. 
okay. so that we know exactly what we're voting on and the public knows exactly what we're voting on and there's no questions after that. So I think that we weren't ready to do that today. Um, and that I think that's what my conversation <coughs> went around and I'd like to, you know, we, we do have a Saturday meeting coming up too and we could have another workshop where we could just kind of get that out, out. Mr. Bizzano? Yeah, that's exactly kind of where I was going. I can't <laughs> have questions or vote on anything not knowing what the total, exactly. what, what the, yeah. you know, right. the, the, all the details. Um, so whether it's us working it out, whether it's getting recommendation from administration, we have to have a, a, a complete picture of what it is that's being recommended and what we're voting on because right. you can give me any redistricting scenario and I'd vote differently based on what the implement, implementation details around it are. Um, so we that that can't be mm -hmm. like you said something we d discuss later. It's got to be part of the, the the motion or you know the recommend yeah. or what mm -hmm. of the plan we're voting on. You know. And something where we have the time to hash it all out. Yeah. You know? And I think that we weren't prepared to do that. I I don't mm -hmm. I didn't feel good about it yeah. today, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, we did have the meeting in December where mm -hmm. we yep. had some questions asked by the public. We yep. didn't answer them. So obviously we need to hash it out more. But I think exactly. that was part of the process. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that would bring us that much closer, like Dr. Campbell said. Hopefully, by the end of this month or beginning of next month, we can, yeah. you know, uh, have the the package on the table, the recommendation of administration, then be able to vote. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sorensen. I appreciate everything you all are saying here, and I use the word exact and and. Mr. Paisano was saying I need to see, but this is a moving target. We all realize that mm. the night that we come to vote on this. The next day, the numbers are going to change again. And the next week, they're going to change after that. So this is not going to be exact. I don't believe this is an exact science. No, I think this is going to be a situational yeah. event. Yeah. Mm. No, you're right. No, but, but where, whatever policy we're voting on needs to be defined, whether it's, you know, how we define grandfathering, whether there's no grandfathering, whether there's, you know, it, those details matter. You're right, the numbers are going to change, but what it is we're implementing, you know, should be a sure thing. Every, every every family should know exactly how it's going to affect them, and unless we decide on Please. these implementation details, how, how does a parent know if my son that's a junior is impacted or not? You know, whatever you know, little details like that. I, I agree with you. We've already because we've already changed from that to like taking high school off the table, right? Where, yeah, that's so the, the conversation yeah, has already changed in that way. Yeah. That uh, to me, I need to see something really clear before I can yeah. vote on it and have it impact. I mean, Ms. Badge's opening question was, when, when do we hit critical mass? When are these numbers critical? Mm -hmm. And they may not be critical next September mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And, if, and if, we have, if they're not critical next September, then what's the point? Right. right. Why do the disruption? Actually, do we have details on when that new um, subdivision is uh, going to start being populated down south? Um, I don't, but that's something that we can we can look at. Yeah, because that's, I mean, e even if it's a redistricting plan that only addresses where that neighborhood goes to school, it'd be huge, because yeah, we could do that I, now. There's no current, Yeah, I, you know, I, I certainly, thank background. you for bringing that up, Mr. Pisano. I certainly would recommend, if, no, if nothing else is done for the following year, that that is something that is reassigned. Mm -hmm. That way we, you know, yeah, regardless of when it's complete, Cor yeah, we've, reassi we've reassigned it, correct. I'm thinking like we have, you know, with the, the discussions, you know, the feedback we were getting last year, you had plenty of people come to us saying, hey, I bought my house in a certain place, you know, being told it was going to be in a certain district. And right. so if we could yes. assign that now before anybody's bought a house there, mm -hmm. they can't say, hey, I thought I was going to be at Indian Brook or exactly. Manomet because, you know, it was Manomet before you bought your house. So I think that would be important to do now, if, if nothing else. Great. So. Yep. We certainly um, can put that on the Saturday agenda as well, maybe to go through um, the presentation that Mm -hmm. Those 36 questions that were that were asked from the public, that that we answered administratively regarding grandfathering and and siblings and that sort of thing. So maybe a good uh, conversation starter for, yeah. for us collectively. So it'd be a good idea for us all to kind of come with our our clear list of things that we need answered by the end of that meeting too. So I'm sorry, Miss Badger, or did you have something too? Right. But if you do. Um, my other thing is just that maybe when we're putting the information or gathering the information is to 
to think about what we do with those students who are in kindergarten that we've already got there. Do we right. stick them on buses this year? If we don't vote, are we gonna give up at a bus that goes to Manomet? Like how, how do we that is that? A, that is something that we would need to look at mm -hmm. uh, to see where they geographically reside. Yeah. Um, so that's something we will look at okay. regardless. We'll have to, we'll have to take mm -hmm. that into consideration. Helpful. Thank you. Great. Of course. Anything else before we move on? All right. I promise thank I'm done. you. Huh? I, said I promise I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> For now. For my life, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so any anything else of any, I think I already asked that, unfinished business? No? All right, next we have the, agen uh, the consent agenda. Is there anything that needs to be pulled from the consent agenda? No? All right, with that, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. Ms. Badger? I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. All right, Ms. Badger um, makes the motion. Ms. Haywood seconds. Any further discussion? All right, we can go ahead and vote on the consent agenda. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. It's unanimous. The consent agenda has been approved. And with that, it is 8.33, and I call the meeting of the Plymouth School Committee adjourned. <laughs>